Wow, this is amazing. Uh, back for a, another High Times Psychedelic Podcast powered by Red Light Holland. And look at the man right there. Look how handsome he is. Yes. Man, <laughs> this is great. I'm really the glasses excited. Are, the glasses are hiding all the wrinkles and uh, you know, beady eyes right now. So I love it. But, no, uh, I, I, thank I, I you. Feel, great to I, be here. Thanks, Mike Zaplin. Now, Zappy, Zappy's here. I'm giving you a round of applause. Yeah, Why not? Uh, Thank you. Yeah, this is, I love doing, you know, it's funny because I, um, I'm so busy running a company. I don't do this as much as I used to do. And I, and I actually miss it. And especially when I get cool guests on, you know, and, and intelligent and hardworking and, and, and out there guests, dynamic guests. And so to, I was excited for this chat. Love it. Love it. I love what you guys are doing. You know, it's like, it's kind of like we're all in the same phase, you know, where we got to educate people. And that's why I think it's so cool to take the time to do this, even when you're running a company and everything, but you, you know, create content that educates is what we need to do. Cause you know, does everybody know what a truffle is? No. Does everybody know what ketamine is? No. Does everybody know what, you know, uh, you know, frequency is no. So like, what do we got to, spend our time doing this because we can't otherwise it just makes everything easier you know i agree so. i and listen you know it's so interesting because because doing the the company side of stuff and you know being the ceo in a publicly traded company at that which is which is like a whole new stress one i never bargained for um you know knowing how hard we're working but sometimes people are, are a bit impatient and obviously investors want to see quick quick gains maybe um and for me all yeah. i'm doing is trying to do what you're saying is a grow a business, which we're doing, you know, we think successfully, but be educating and informing, you know, this is whole, like a whole part of this process because it's such a new industry still and yes. take time. And I think once, you know, people really catch on to without making medical claims, but I think what a lot of people believe in ter terms of potential benefits and positivity, and this is where you are a big part of this whole movement. Um, I think they're going to, they're going to be like, my goodness, this future is endless. Uh, yeah. and, and endless in a, in a really good way. So, so Mike Zappi, why don't you tell us a little, I mean, I know, I think a lot of people know of you already, you know, great articles about you everywhere, but you know, a brief history of you and then really we'll turn it into psychedelics and how you got so involved into the space. Sure. Sure. Psychedelics is a big part of my growth, you know, and I think, uh, unfortunately I had to find it the way everybody else finds it, which is, you know, maybe you experience it when you're younger, just partying and trying to, you know, have experiences. And then later in your life, you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Could this have been something that's really important? And now what if I were to dive deep again with some kind of a different intent, you know, is kind of my story. I think it's everybody's. I want to change that. I want it to be like where, you know, these things that we know about today, they get educated into the system enough that, you know, in future generations, people are going to be microdosing, you know, similar to, you know, how they might take vitamins or, you know, maybe they put some in the water, like they do fluoride and try to clean off people's pineal gland. I mean, this is like where I, know we're going to get to, you know, and finally, you know, if you kind of look back at, um, you know, medical devices from 100 years ago or 200 years ago, you're like, oh my God, they like saw people and oh my God, that's hard. It's so, you know, barbaric. And then, you know, 100 years from now, they're going to look back and go, oh my God, you prick people with needles and you cut them. Oh man, you guys are savages. And so, I think it's just this, you know, education, the technology, humans getting out of their own way and patterns. And so I had always had really good psychedelic experience just coming back to your question. Oh yeah. In the sun, way better. I'm trying, yes. to, I'm trying to look nicer, you know? Oh, yeah. that's yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, it's, it's like, like a whole a... different <laughs> it's a different podcast now. I, I was just going to say, this is so enlightening talking to you. So I just, mm -hmm. I feel like, ah, it's opening yeah. up the skies and, and you get to hear all of this. <laughs> But it's, it's, it. it's really interesting. You mentioned the sort of barbaric forms of, of, of past, you know, ways of treating human beings. And, and I do wonder, I often wonder this, and listen, I'm never one to question, I, sorry, I am one to question science and, and medical, okay? I am, I do question it. And listen, I don't use antibiotics, of course, if I, for some reason, needed to, I probably would. Um, I, 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 I really don't get flu shots even. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but just, this is just who I am. And, and, 
um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a point I've never thought of. Will we one day look back if psychedelics kind of come into the realm of normal treatment one day, whether it's medically and recreationally across the world, if that's the potential and people all of a sudden with now millions of people can be the biggest clinical trial to say, wow, what we're learning about it is true. You know, if that is the case one day, it's so interesting to think of the barbaric practices maybe, but yet here was something that's so natural and given to us and always available. And it's like, mm -hmm. at what point, you know, do, do we, can we really question science? I mean, and really question right. the medical side right. of things and going, why, why was there this big shift? Why in the late sixties was there this big shift? Was it just the war on drugs? Why didn't we continue the focus on the growth of what we were learning about post-traumatic stress disorder, et cetera, and how this might treat uh, patients very well with mental health crisis going on? I, I mean, do you, is it all greed and money or is there, or, you know, what is it in your opinion? Yeah. In, you know, in my opinion, you know, it's not even really a conspiracy. There's nobody holding it back. It's just lack of education. Yeah. And that's like, you know, comes back to what we're saying. We, we have to educate people. So, you know, I want to like a hundred years from now, them to look back at 2000, you know, the year 2000 and be like, oh, that's the, the generation that went back to plants. They went back to nature after, you know, humans got away from nature and went with their own hubris and technology and thought they knew everything oh this is that generation that brought it back like I want that to be our legacy and you know thank god nature is so intelligent that it would be bringing out these plants at a time when people need them so much so I don't think you know sometimes I think people think oh humans are ruining the environment and doing this and that but humans are they don't have much impact like nature is so intelligent that if they just get out of their own way everything's cool we have everything we need we have the sun you know we have an atmosphere we have water we have plants to you know help us with any condition that could come up that we can't even imagine like a pandemic where you get ptsd and it's so beautiful there's all these plants here but we have to you know just shift our human selves away from you know our own egos and thinking we know what's going on because like that's the beauty of psychedelics to me is that in the times where I've transcended being a human were my best experiences because, you know, I'm always running things through my human filter, which is scanning for danger and, you know, coming up with all these patterns. Maybe I inherited them or traumatically start thinking about some, everything I think about, I put it through that negative pattern. And so when I transcend being human, then I'm like, oh, wow, like, who cares? You know, I'm a speck of dust, I'm the entire universe. I guess I just got to enjoy it. And then you get in that headspace and life is so beautiful when you're just like enjoying the miracle that you're in. And, um, you know, for me recently, I, you know, I, my history is that, you know, I had my own midlife crisis of spirituality and I wound up doing ayahuasca and San Pedro and changed my life. But uh, from there, I wound up, you know, trying everything else. I boga and uh, 5-MeO DMT plant-based and all kinds of things to try to understand what nature could provide me. And it's, you know, it's so cool. And then, you know, to find ultimately uh, ketamine as a molecule uh, is is a real breakthrough because I think we forget what a miracle we're in and these psychedelics tap us back into that and I think ketamine is the one because it's like a one hour really tight psychedelic experience and you can go off to work or go eat some food after no integration no real you know tough integration work to do no purging going in it's so beautiful that we as a society have this thing that taps you immediately back into the miracle and you're like oh wow this is incredible and so i think we need that and that's what psychedelics are going to be you know in the to everybody is just like a reawakening to the miracle that you're sitting in right now Mike Zaplin's uh, with us, Zappy, as, as he's well known, uh, uh, you know, psychedelic to the stars, you know, this guy's awesome. We'll get into that in a little bit too, uh, on sort of your celebrity circle and not that that's who you are, but it's also a really cool thing to talk about. Um, and listen, at the, I, I said it earlier, at the risk of sounding like conspiracy theorists or anything, you know, um, I do agree with you wholeheartedly that, listen, 
while, while we need to protect the planet, it's not to protect the planet from protecting the planet for survival. I think it's to protect the planet from humans to have survival on the planet because the yeah. trees, the rocks, the, you know, they will outlast us all. Like that is without a doubt. And it really is interesting. And anecdotally for my, for my usages with, with microdosing in particular and psilocybin, it is, you know, the, the explanation I love to give is, is someone who's, who's you know, we're, we're also, especially media personality in this, you know, you put up fronts, you put up egos, you know, you, we, we try to deal with the rat race on the daily and you want to, you know, you want to make money, you want to, you know, provide for families, all this kind of stuff. And it's so interesting when, when I microdose, I think so much more of the planet and I think so much more of not, a, not in a way where it's like all of a sudden I want to hug every tree I see, but I'm just really aware of the environment around me and how much I love it. And, and I go back to, and I think it's adding on to what you're saying, is letting go of this guard we have and letting go about our self-indulgent brains and, and this egoness that we all have. And it's all of a sudden, well, now I can connect better with surrounding environments. I connect better with my children. I connect better with my wife. I connect better with business partners. It's just, you let this little bit of a guard down. And, and I guess what I'm getting at is it's if humans for some, and Twitter's the worst, right? Because everyone just wants their opinion with no real discussion on what's going on. And if, if I always say like, if everyone microdosed or if everyone did this stuff carefully or understood what worked for them and, you know, listen, I understand psilocybin zap. I don't understand ketamine as much. I don't understand some of the others, but if I think if humans gave this a shot and, you know, whether it was legally or medically provided, I think you would start to hear these types of stories where, wow, let's connect with other things. Not only so worry so much about connecting with who we are, because then you live in your own reality, which is usually unenjoyable if it's only enjoy, if it's only in your own head. Yeah. Wow. That's really, that's it. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think that, um, you're on it. I mean, like, like you're saying, I mean, we should have like a Mike Twitter on microdose channel, you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, <laughs> there should be a separate Twitter if you're microdosing, you know? And, and I, I feel the same way. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a lot of moneyed interest that, you know, of course, psilocybin microdose could replace all of the antidepressants out there because, you know, when I do a microdose of psilocybin, uh, I always notice, you know, at some point during the day, it's subperceptual. So it's not like I notice all the time, but like you said, at some point I recognize like some kind of connection to nature or the flow of nature. And I'm like, I'm always like shocked. Cause I'm always like, Oh wow, look at that. And then I go, Oh yeah, I microdose. Oh my God. Like this is probably what everybody who's taking antidepressants wants to feel like. This is why they're taking that. They want to feel this. And wow, here I am. I just like took this, like an amount of, of uh, psilocybin that's like smaller than a dime. Like, and it costs like nothing. I mean, wow. Nature is so powerful. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just a cool time. We're living in, you know, this time where we understand basic science, basic medical. And that's why, you know, I started this mind army social movement because the mind army is fighting for the right to pursue happiness. And we believe that's everybody's inalienable, right? You can't take that away. If somebody has to spin around, uh, you know, and get into some, you know, transcendental space, or they have to take a plant, if they're not bothering anybody, they're not affecting anybody else, that's their human right at the basic level, the most basic level. And that, when you do that, it informs all your other rights. So we have to really encourage people to do this. But, you know, the reality is that, you know, when you uh, get more in touch with nature, you just, you're in the flow, everything goes better. And like you said, your relationships, your business, and we have to just, you know, tune back into that and take advantage of these opportunities. And I want to kind of, if I can segue for a second about ketamine, because, you know, I always thought, oh, ketamine, that's like uh, synthesized some kind of thing in a laboratory that they make, you know, and then I realized, oh, no, that's not, it's, they put some salts and some minerals together and this new ketamine crystal forms. And I'm like, that's not any different than ayahuasca where the shaman has to take the vine and the leaf and put them together and make this, you know, new element, but it's organic. Same thing. People always say, Oh, LSD. I wouldn't do that. That's chemicals. I'm like, no, that's uh, you know, bacteria that grows on a rye seed. Okay. That's totally natural. We're just, you know, growing in the lab, but like 
people just are, they don't have the education to know. And so what I'm excited about for ketamine is that here's this crystal, okay, that is, you know, probably the most incredible compound on the planet because it breaks suicidal ideation immediately. It can break depression, even treatment resistant depression. It can affect addiction. We can see it on a brain scan affecting the areas of the brain. Uh, it works for PTSD, uh, all the, you know, it's just, it's incredible molecule. But, you know, when you think about that molecule and the fact that we have the ability now to access it and what ketamine, the science on the ketamine, and this is what I wanted to just touch on because people don't know, and this is like where I like to educate people, is that you have this area of your brain called your default mode network. And in there, there's this mechanism called your lateral habenula. And that lateral habenula is recording all the stress you've ever had in your whole life. And when it gets to be too much, your brain goes into burst mode, which is a totally different brain state. And what it does is it shuts off your dopamine production when you're in burst mode. So you get no dopamine, which is your happiness. It's your motivation to do anything. You're getting no dopamine. And the first time that you use the ketamine, that that ketamine molecule interacts with your energy, it takes your brain out of burst mode immediately. You start getting your dopamine back. And so when I give it to people, uh, you know, like the next day, their husband or their wife will call up and they'll be like, oh my God, he's clean. He just cleaned the garage. Oh my God. He, he's been threatening to do that for 10 years. He just did it. You know, what, like whatever you're doing to keep doing it. And it's like, wow, what a simple thing, you know, to, to fix. And then the science on the ketamine is, you know, you have that 45 minute incredible uh, experience where Every, all the chatter in your mind is just quieted down. There's no external thoughts hitting you. You're just nothing. Your own thoughts aren't even hitting you. And in that state is amazing. But in the 45, in the couple hours after that 45 minute experience, the ketamine metabolizes into hydroxy norketamine and actually builds new neural pathways in your brain around trauma and depression in these patterns. So it's like, it's so simple. All we have to do is trust nature, go inside, and don't take it seriously. And this is going to be, even Twitter would be like a pleasure to be on. Yeah, it's like uh, de debates. Uh, you know, if you gave it to both the, the, the running mates, uh, your president and Biden, you know, they, they might even actually have some rational conversations, just not attacking each other every two seconds. Zappy, yeah. what, is your, what is your then official involvement on the business side with ketamine? Um, so, you know, right now, I, I, you know, I have this movie coming out with Lamar Odom, which is a documentary where I put him through some ketamine treatments. And once he went inside and had this incredible experience, realizing that he could find a lot of fulfillment, uh, do a lot of, you know, building neural pathways around damage one, because he had strokes and things like that, um, that once he trusted me to a level uh, that that was needed, he wound up coming down to Mexico with me and doing iboga, uh, actually ibogaine, uh, to break his addictive patterns and try to, you know, heal his cognitive abilities and his physical body, which he had had, you know, from a drug overdose, he had damaged himself quite a bit, 12 strokes, six heart attacks, liver damage, kidney failure. And incredibly, of course, that, you know, he was stabilized with the uh, ketamine, but the, ibo uh, the ibogaine, you know, just corrected him physically and mentally in a 12 hour period to the point where, you know, uh, he said, I think I can make a comeback in professional basketball, which is like, you know, impossible if you've been through what he's been through. And he worked out, he trained, and, you know, a number of months later, he wound up playing a professional tournament in Dubai. And so that's his personal rocky moment. And he says in the film, you know, he like lost his fear of death. And he realized that, you know, just because he's not the same basketball player he used to be doesn't mean he can't have fun and enjoy himself. And so it's just like a really beautiful uh, movie. And so that movie is going to come out in the beginning of the year. So in response to that, um, myself, Warren Gumpel, my partner, we decided to put up uh, a company called Keta MD uh, so that we could 
when people see Lamar in the movie have this incredible experience with ketamine, his first time in the doctor's office, he says he's never felt so good in his life. And, you know, he really had, you know, quite a few transformative epiphanies while he did those treatments. And so uh, we don't want to just play the movie and go, hey, figure out where to, you know, get ketamine done properly. Because again, there's a lot of people out there using ketamine nasally in nightclubs and things like that. The reality is you need to do it medically where you get a low dose of ketamine you know, over a 45 minute period, allow you to build up those neural pathways in the right way. So in response to that, we, you know, realize, hey, we have to help people. We started something called Keta MD, which is going to be a virtual uh, program where you can talk to the doctor online, you can get your medicine shipped to your house, and then you can, um, then you can be guided by one of our nurses who's been trained and done ketamine uh, as well, because we're doing them in our uh, lozenges in these melts. So we're just really trying on the on the business side to, you know, make sure that we have something in place when people see the movie. And then secondly, we've been doing uh, corporate events where we've been doing uh, our, um, you know, doing ketamine with groups of executives and their executive teams. And when you do it in a group, it creates a very powerful group effect and you you not only you know what the idea is that we get everybody you know with a prescription uh cleared by the doctor and then we all have our melt and then we uh sit back together as a group we have kind of a modern day plant medicine experience a ceremony we take the lozenge at the same time we listen to the same frequency based music in that experience is a lot of ESP type things happening, things that are really hard to explain. Um, but coming out of it, everybody has their own personal aha moment, but there's also that group effect. And I think what I've seen is I've got a lot of Silicon Valley companies. I've done a few uh, different, you know, company executive teams that you would know the name. And then now I've got them saying, we'd like to get our thousands of employees to go through your, this method and build cohesiveness in the teams and build, you know, really, you know, strong mental health because all what they're saying to me, the top executives in Silicon Valley are saying our employees are at home because of coronavirus. They're on, you know, Zoom calls and phone calls and stuff like that. And like, we know that they're not, we're not getting productivity. They're, you know, they have all that background stuff, but also mentally they're, you know, in flux and how do we get more productivity? How do we increase our human capital, which is the most important thing we have in our whole company? And the way they do it is to get your people to be okay and resonating at a good frequency. And so that this is going to be really big, um, our uh, ketamine program for corporations, for the Keta MD. And um, so that's, that's, that's really how I'm you know, going out is really a necessity thing because when people see the movie, you know, I know millions of people are going to want to have the ketamine experience because they're going to watch Lamar go through it and go, wow, that was like amazing. And the science is incredible. Like I think I need it or my brother needs it or whatever it is. Um, so we just want to be able to respond to that and have something in place for that. But I think uh, this is the most interesting thing that I've realized, you know, kind of working originally, you know, working with different people. And then, you know, celebrities coming to me, I think probably because I've developed a certain amount of, you know, trust with them that, you know, since I've been involved with Michelle Rodriguez, and, and we filmed our psychedelic experiences and our integration, same thing with Lamar Odom, that, you know, I'm, they know that I'm going to represent them in a very positive light, and that I want them to have a great experience, because, this is all about education. So Zappy, so the, the celebrity connection that you have and the trust that that, that builds, um, if you could continue with that thought, because that, that, this is really interesting how, you know, when, when there is a celebrity connection, people do, do trust, you know, the process a little more. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's And, and by the way, I mean, I'm just going to put these on just to be as cool as you. And all right. All right. Get, cool. you know, I just want to get nice. in the sun here or out, maybe out of the sun. What do you think? Is that, yeah, yes. that might be better. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's okay. good. Okay, yeah. that's better. Sorry, go on. <laughs> so cool. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it's more, more or less, you know, it's kind of like the accepting and taking what the universe is giving you. And if 
we're living in a celebrity driven culture, then, you know, we have to acknowledge that. And if some people care more about, let's say what Kim Kardashian thinks, than you know, a hundred million dollar study from Harvard medical school, like don't get all upset over it. Just you, you know, have access to hopefully have, yeah, Kim Kardashian talk about it instead of, you know, a professor from Harvard, you know, regurgitating what the study said. It's just, it's just a reality to accept. And it, when you accept that, like I have, I said, oh, well, wow, let's, let's make sure that if we're going to educate people that it's through celebrity. And I think that's, that's an amazing thing. I think, you know, what makes Lamar Odom really special, uh, different than most other celebrities is that people have watched him, uh, on the Kardashians for seven years and they really feel like they know him. It's not like another celebrity where like, you know, if this were Tom Cruise, somebody would be like, oh yeah, he seems different or I don't know, is that the way he normally is? But because it's Lamar, it's like people are like, no, I know Lamar. Like I can see the change in him, you know? And they go, I would be best friends with Lamar, you know, if I knew him. I would, And it's just cool because now they're going to get to see him go through that transformation knowing all the information they do about him. It's what, what's great. the movie actually called? I don't think you've said that yet. The title yeah. of the movie. Uh, so the movie's called Lamar Odom Reborn. And uh, Reborn is really cool because during one of his ketamine treatments that's in the movie that we filmed, um, he's in there. And, you know, you don't usually say too much in there, but, you know, sometimes a, a major epiphany comes or something like that or something that you need to express and he said reborn 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 uh, and he was like you could see that he was like getting reborn in that moment and so we're like oh man that's totally the the movie name so lamar odom reborn and um what's cool you know i want to tell you what i did was uh basically to come up with a formula for him and the formula in the movie that i used for him was ketamine plus plant medicine plus a daily practice like meditation or breathing equals a conscious transformation. And so to, to have that conscious transformation, you know, based on who you are and what you're, you know, trying to achieve or what your intent is or what your issues are, you're going to have a slightly different formula depending on who you are. And that's the beauty of psychedelics. It's like as a psychedelic concierge, um, you know, I think that is a, the right title for what I'm doing because it's kind of like when you go to a hotel and you go to the concierge and you're like, hey, where should we go for dinner tonight around the hotel? And they say, oh, well, what kind of food do you like? Do you want there to be music? Are you into wine? They ask you all these questions and then they go, oh, okay, go to this restaurant because you're going to love it. And, you, you know, they send you off. So here somebody comes to me and, you know, is talking to me about what they're going through, what their traumas are, what their intent is. Uh, all that. And then it's easy for me at that point to come up with a formula. And we have all these incredible compounds. So if, you know, somebody's disconnected from nature, I might say, you know, you need to do some San Pedro. If somebody has, you know, just generalized, you know, lack of empathy and caring, maybe I would give them some psilocybin microdose. So, uh, you know, and if they have an addiction profile, I'm going to tell them to go do I Ibogaine like Lamar. Um, a lot I, of times I'm going to, yeah. I'm so, I'm so curious as to, as to sort of you understand what you think you need to sort of prescribe to, to, as a the concierge to individuals. Um, I, I have two really, you know, big questions here for you. One, what are the legalities of all these sort of concierge, you know, uh, here's a, here's a plan for you. Is, is that like, you know, yeah. are, are, is, are, you know, it's it's like it's like the concierge of the hotel. It's totally legal because like I'm not providing any of the materials, and I'm not yeah. the shaman, and I'm not the doctor. I'm just you know making recommendations based on best practices and things like that. So similar to the you know concierge of the hotel, he's not cooking your dinner. You know what I mean? He's just like recommending. And I think that's you know that's really the important part because you know people need all these kinds of different things, but really because their lack of education, they need somebody who, like myself, has actually had their direct experience with all of these different things, so that I can say, oh, based on what you're telling me, I really think this is going to be best for you, because my experience and the people around me and best practices say that this is what you need. And so, you know, of course, the concierge is usually going to be right after he asks all those questions, or she asks all those questions, and then 
um, you know, send you off to a restaurant, it's going to probably be a pretty good experience. And so that's what I'm going for. No, and listen, I, I mean, I, I think that it's uh, a, 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 anecdotally, you speak to your experience and you share that wisdom with individuals. And, and you know, I think that's how it's kind of perceived. And it's sort of a given that uh, there's agreed upon, okay, yeah, you know, I just trust Zappy and I trust the advice he's giving me. With that being said, and, and I will personalize this a little bit, not necessarily to me, but to, to our company, Red Light Holland, that's publicly traded. I, I, I have noticed that, that some individuals, whether they're pioneers or whether they're advocates or whether they're scientists, there's sort of this big debate on should it only be medically prescribed or should it be sort of recreationally used as well? And, and one of the things that I, I hope it doesn't come across as defensive, Zappy, but I want your view on it. Uh, and I think it just comes sure. across as like questioning. The old radio show host comes out of me and I, I ask these pioneers and I ask oh, wow. scientists a lot of the time or I ask individuals involved in nonprofit organizations that are getting access to psilocybin for those people who um, have now been granted compassionate access and things like this. I say like, without, I go, I go, without the sort of recreational use that you've already been using over the years to understand what you're now saying, what you understand, for individuals that you can give advice to. I mean, like, why then should it only be medically prescribed? Why then should it only be given to you through certain organizations? I mean, at what point does that actually sound elitist, meaning that why can yeah. only some have access and maybe not everyone to decide for themselves through responsible use and through education information, of course, which is something you know yes. our company is quite proud of doing. And, and, you know, we're doing it in legal jurisdictions. And, and I just like to think that if some who have been using it forever can now promote it, why can't everyone been given, uh, be given that, uh, that, that right and, and, and be given that yeah. right affordably? Well, that, that's the whole thing is that you're, you're on it right there. That's the Mind Army's mission. The Mind Army is saying, hey, you know what? Back, you know, years ago or even six months ago from before the pandemic, if you wanted to have a debate about whether it should be recreational or medical or whatever, you know, I guess maybe that at some point made sense so you could figure it out. But like, we're in a crisis right now. We are in a suicide addiction, depression epidemic. And now we got a PTSD epidemic happening from coronavirus like this is a very scary sci-fi movie it's I, the most scary sci-fi movie i've ever seen in my life including all sci-fi movies and we're living in it so we can't say oh you have to do it through a doctor or no if somebody is suicidal has an addiction or depression or somebody in their family they have the god-given right to use that material around them that energy to work on themselves and I think we have to, in this moment, as a community, demand this right back. That's what the Mind Army is doing. They're saying, we're demanding the right back, number one. What we're doing for harm reduction is that we're putting together a task force, and we are going to uh, empower all of these people because in every single city in the country, and Canada and everywhere else, there's a psychedelic society that exists already right now. And... I know from being a Grateful Dead fan, a deadhead, and going to all these hundred plus concerts, that at those concerts, there would always be a few people who would give up going and seeing the music so they could help people that were maybe having a bad experience mm -hmm. with uh, whatever psychedelic was going on or whatever's happening. So that those people exist everywhere. If we could just let them come to the surface and be available to help people via phone or Zoom or in person to help them to have a good experience to integrate, we would do a lot of harm reduction. And then secondly, the Mind Army is putting together a, a microdosing handbook. And the Mind Army microdosing handbook, we've got content from MAPS, Double Blind, uh, Third Wave, really incredible. And basically, this is a little handbook. We're going to give away millions of them digitally, and we're going to give a lot of them away physically. And what we're going to do there is we're putting this handbook together. So if the president writes the executive order that we are asking for, the Mind Army is demanding an executive order to make psychedelics legal for the crisis and PTSD, that at least people will have this microdosing handbook to be able to look at and say, oh, okay, I found some, you know, I, somebody gave me some mushrooms to try to help me. Let me see. I'll look in the book. I'll understand how to safely begin working with this compound. And so that we already have the resources. It doesn't have to be done by a medical person. The only reason I 
you know, uh, the ketamine is, of course, it's FDA approved and it can be done in a doctor's office. So that one's really appealing to me because I don't have to fight over whether people can use it. I can just say, oh, okay, FDA approved, go ahead, you know, have a, somebody in the right set and setting guide you through it. But we have to have this available for our crisis right now. Uh, I, and listen, er, everything you're saying, like, you know, when I take off the red light Holland Corp hat and the publicly traded side hat, you know, like, because I can never make medical claims. And I, but, you know, the responsible sort of use, you know, uh, side of me, what I'm hearing and, you know, the, the, that sort of empathy is that's who I am. This is sort of why I got into this. You know, listen, there's some capitalistic side of me, of course, too. Like, I don't want to ever BS anybody. Of course there is. I want my shareholders to do well. I want to have a product that one day could be sold all across the world. Of course, that's why I'm in this too. But genuinely, genuinely, I want to help people. And I wish I could make more of those medical claims, but I love how you're approaching it with the happiness army. And, and, and you know, the, and listen, we're, we're developing things as well. And, you know, I look forward to talking about that, which is connecting with the community and education and information you know we're developing the virtual reality headset right now that people when they go into smart shops within the netherlands they put this on it's going to be ready in about a month two months from now wow. hopefully and it's going to put their cool. mind into the space of a microdose and also educate them on the truffle the history the origins and what it potentially can do for them and by the way if they're uncomfortable with that they shouldn't buy our product either you know so these you know we really want to get very innovative like you are as well yeah. but at the end of the day it is a natural source this is not a synthetic medication this is not created yeah. you know that that then 10 years later you go oh my god there's billion dollar lawsuits against deaths like the opioid crisis you know now all of a sudden they're yes. claiming bankruptcy the Sackler family when it was all bs in the first place because they were harming you know so many multiples of thousands of people and and yet you know here is something that people are learning about people are asking about and i and, and one thing I'll, one thing i'll say for the entire community and i think it's to echo your statements is if you're in the field of science and if you're in the field of, of, of if you're a medical doctor and, and if you're an advocate or a pioneer, I think everyone should work together not to limit the promotion of careful use of these of psychedelics. Because the second yes. we do that, now I think you're limiting and you're actually adding to the stigma that we're all help try, trying to end. And, and I just yeah. hope we can work through it together. Um, because if we don't, then we're kind of, we're going against what the true beliefs are. So, uh, you know, th and this is my yeah. fear that yeah. some people are, are putting themselves on a certain stage that I don't think they have the right to be put on. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, you know, it's all education at this point. I mean, and again, you can't make any claims about your product, but I can. And realistically, based on what your product is and how effective it is and the fact that truffles are like, you know, available to people as an alternative to, uh, you know, antidepressants and you know just all alcohol and all these things that they they probably use to feel like they would taking a truffle that your stock should be trading like zoom and google right now because <laughs> of how amazing the product is uh, yeah exactly, that's know, how good it is. i mean yeah. well, 10 years from now people will look back and they'll be like oh my god like i could have been in like i how did i not get in the truffle space like this is crazy you know and so uh, it's just educating. That's it. it. It's a lot of education. And listen, it is early and it is speculative and it, it is a new industry. I just hope that it's not limited because there is this mental yeah. health crisis. And, and uh, I just think there's a lot of people out there who don't want to wait eight years for big pharma to finally take it over after, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of clinical trials to sort of show what people all over the world are already doing anyway. And granted, in most countries, they're doing it illegally, but they are self-medicating and people are doing it with cannabis. People have been doing that for years. And we saw the path, you know, that's happened now, with, especially in Canada, with it being legal uh, all, all across the country. I think one day yes. in the States, it will be as well. And, and, and the other interesting part about I said stigma earlier and I'm sure you feel the very same way especially having worked super closely with guys like Lamar Odom and other celebrities like it's so interesting when you start to compare what we're doing to to even alcohol because it is so wild to me that that it's still so you know celebrated and say you know uh, you know you win a championship game you're popping bottles throwing each other's face you're you're going out at night you're you're a stressed day you have a couple glass of wine it's like we know statistically and factually that alcohol is a massive killer. 
who says that three up to three million deaths a year are attributed to alcohol. And yet, yeah. you know, we still talk about this, like it's, the, it's, it's, it's perfect and it's fun and it's okay. Yeah. So people need to learn more, not only about what maybe potentially can help like things like psilocybin, ketamine, et cetera, but why don't you look at actually things that potentially can hurt? And those are the things you're yes. using today. And, and you know, well, this you know, is sort e, of e, e, a I lifestyle would, we're trying to create here. Say, I would eat. Yeah, and I would even say if you want to use alcohol and you want to use tobacco and you know it's bad, like do it. It's not my business, yep. you know. But you that's know fair. the reality that's very is, fair. yeah. From yeah, a guy who drinks a cup of glass of wine a night, that's very fair. <laughs> so. Yeah, and you know that we ha we just have to be open that everybody has their own. You know, everybody's trying as hard as they can. You know, everybody just wants the same thing. They want peace and they yeah. want happiness for their family. It's not yep. that difficult, okay? But you know, we are in an an old paradigm where, you know, 54 years ago, they made these psychedelics illegal because they said, oh, well, we need to study them for safety. And I, you know, I understand that. That's right. That's reasonable. They have to be studied. But, you know, now it's been 54 years later and millions of people have, have used it, many with great effect. And I'm not going to sit here knowing what I know about basic science and basic medical and go, oh, okay, alcohol is good, tobacco is good, but psilocybin is bad. And even if I have an addiction or a depression or I'm going to kill myself, I can't even use it. It's totally off limits. Like, are you kidding me? I'm not living in that paradigm. So I'm out. I just stepped right out of that thing. And I think we have to educate people that they can step out of that old paradigm. But like you're saying, it needs to be that if you are, you know, need, you know, help that you can access nature and nobody's going to get in your way. Uh, Zappy, are you in a blessed situation? Because let's be, let's, you know, for everything I've read about you, you've done well in life. You know, you're financially very stable. You, you know, you had great success in the dot-com era. You're very innovative. You've created all this kind of stuff. You've done well for yourself financially. Is it, is it an easier path for you because you can go and explore these different opportunities? Um, meaning that, you know, you don't have to be at a nine to five or you don't have to be, you know, slaving away at a, at a, at a, at a, at a you know, new job just to climb up the ladder somehow. It, 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 and, you know, and, and then is there a balance for those who maybe aren't in such blessed situations? Yeah, I, I'm going to say, of course, I know I'm a blessed human being, and I, but I'm like everybody else. You know, I, I have my trauma. I have my, uh, you know, days that I wake up and go, oh, man, I don't want to do this, you know, and whatever it is, like we all have that. So yep. we have to accept that even if, you know, this is something, thank God, that like, you know, psilocybin, it's available to everybody. It doesn't cost a lot of money. This isn't a very expensive thing. While some things like, you know, going to Peru and having ayahuasca or, you know, going to a resort in Costa Rica to have, you know, some other experiences like, oh yeah, that's, that's a privilege. But I get as much from a psilocybin microdose, which probably costs, I don't know, uh, 10 cents uh, or that I could make myself for zero. I mean, that is the great equalizer of psychedelics is that, you know, we all need them. We all, you know, need to get our frequency in line. So I don't think it's any easier or any harder. You know, if you watch the reality of truth, the guy, Jerry, in that movie, you know, he had a hundred million dollar company. Uh, he was, you know, on, you know, on top of the world, as far as, you know, when you're looking at the, from the outside in, but he was hurting. He was trying to like literally kill himself. I'm just plugging in my phone here. No uh, he was trying to kill himself with drugs and alcohol and gambling and stuff like that. So I don't think it really has to do with, with financial or, uh, you know, where you're at, because wherever you're at, even if you're in depression, you can, you have natural things that can pull you out. So I don't think, I think, you know, I wouldn't want to be you know, Prince Harry right now, he's got everything in the world, but that seems like a really difficult, really intense life of scrutiny. I don't think it has anything to do with it. I, I hope him and his wife call me uh, and say, hey, we need some psychedelic concierge because like we're hurting right now. And uh, I think, you know, they could benefit greatly and they'd be great spokespeople. So no, I think it's, it's, that's the great equalizer. And I want to tell you, my future forecasting that I'm doing right now is really even more incredible than what we're experiencing right now, which is that the future of psychedelics and the future of medicine are about frequency. 
And but what I mean by that is that, you know, already this future's come where instead of eating an orange to get some vitamin C, okay, if you were to give somebody the frequency through some headphones or, you know, give them that frequency of vitamin C, it would cause an electrical reaction in the brain, a chemical reaction in the body, and you would get the benefit of vitamin C without ever having taken it. And there's a company right now that I'm working with uh, on on uh, some products that I'm gonna uh, just not talk too jet, you know, too specifically about. But the amazing thing is they've got an app right now where you talk into the app for 30 seconds, and it can tell you it, if you have coronavirus within 90% accuracy, and it can also tell you by the frequency of your voice what vitamins and nutrients you're deficient in. And I'm like, wow, that's incredible, number one. Number two, now a couple, you know, some celebrities like Will Smith and, uh, and, uh, and some others, uh, Taylor Swift and some people, they have these headphones. So now after you know what you're deficient in, you put on the headphones and they give you the frequency, let's say of vitamin B12, they give you that frequency and your body ca causes that reaction just like you took vitamin B12 in an injection into your body. And so this is the future of psychedelics. You are not going to have to take a, 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 a truffle. You're going to have to just basically, or a mushroom or ayahuasca or anything, you're just going to take the frequency of that and you are going to get the same effect. And you'll still, you know, take a red, you know, a, a red Holland truffle because you'll be, uh, that'll be tuned to a certain frequency that you're looking for. But in general, this is the great equalizer because it's going to be like, you don't even need a psychedelic in the future. You're not even going to have to take something. There's no way they can make frequency illegal. And we've already done this with ketamine. We have the ketamine frequency. You, you know, tune that properly. So it's, it's right for you to maintain. And it's like you did a microdose of ketamine without taking any medicine. All of a sudden you're in clear mind and you're like, wow, I feel really good, really relaxed, really making good decisions. And you didn't even take anything. So in the future, as much as we're fighting right here for psychedelics, uh, we really don't because there's no way they can stop frequency. And that's what that little mushroom is. It's just a frequency energy and you put it in your energy and then you synthesize it with your energy. And that is so beautiful to me that they can't even stop us on this road to freedom. We are just like, can't be stopped because I love it, man. And it's everything. Yeah, Zappy, I've been reading a lot about digital medicine and, and how this works and, and, and the digital plays in the future. And, and it is something, you know, I study and, and look into and reading also about vibrations and, you know, just it's, it's really phenomenal. And, you know, we think we think we sort of know so much, but I feel like we know so little. So it's really exciting to, to really try to understand what's to come. And, and ultimately, we're all looking for balance, you know, and that's really what it yeah. comes down to. Uh, and how do we balance yes. mind, body, and, and how is it wellness? And, you know, I hope more people start to look at this as wellness, um, because yeah. really this is what this is all about, is wellness. And, 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 and if there's the deep, long guided therapy sessions or, or the hour sessions in ketamine or the microdosing sessions, really it's people finding their wellness. And I hope that's how we, we educate people through it. I hope that's how people intent and purpose want to use it. It's not, it's not for partying. It's not, you know, people need to wrap their heads around what it's about. It's not what you did in college. And listen, we're older guys now. We have families, you know, we, we've lived a life or two. And, and I think when you get to this age, you start to realize exactly what you just said. And I was really pleased with the way you answered the question that, yeah, it's great to have financial security, but it doesn't equate happiness. And I think what equates happiness, and we realize this because we still have our own things in our heads that don't let us enjoy, you know, my background behind me, because I'm so stressed about the day ahead or what's going on right now. But you worry about the future, hopefully. And those who worry about yeah. the future, that's evolution. And I think that's what we're all trying to do here. Worry about our children's future. Worry about what's going on with COVID right now. And let's figure out a way to make the difference. And by the way, let's hopefully have science and medical to prove it. But don't limit us from doing it, okay? Let's get behind yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So I love it. And, you know, and I think like, you know, when I talk about like ketamine reconnecting you to the miracle or a microdose of psilocybin, just letting you appreciate nature. It's like, you know, everything's fine, you know, and in reality, everything is perfect. We just have to reorganize a little bit. You know, the sun is giving off more energy than we could ever use. We just need to harness it. It's okay. We haven't 
done that yet. It's all right. You know, if enough people have a deep experience, go inside and come out with more empathy, because like to me right now, I think there's sort of like an empathy crisis happening. And by that, I mean, people care and people want the best for everybody, but they can't really put themselves in other people's shoes. And I think when you have like a really deep psychedelic experience, you actually sometimes are in somebody else's shoes or can put yourself there emotionally and energetically. And then you come out and you're just like, oh my God, like I have so much actual empathy for what's you, going you, on here. You just nailed it. And, and I'm, I'm so, and I, I go back to Twitter and social media because there's so much attacking that goes on there based on what someone said 20 years ago, based on, based on someone's look, based on, and you know, we see it obviously, you know, everywhere. And it, it's just so amazing to me that while so many people are promoting like a nice liberal attitude and wanting change and stuff, you know, there's so many people who still attack so many others without knowing what they are going through that day. Ultimately at the end of it all, man, someone in their family is probably suffering through cancer because statistics show that. Um, someone in, in their family is suffering from major depression because statistics show that. And just because you see what is perceived success at someone, don't take them down. And just because you see someone perceived to look differently than you, don't ever try to take them down. Try to understand them better. And if we don't do like this, it sounds so corny and easy, but, and maybe age mm. does this to you. You want to, you want, cause I've never, I, it's not like I was perfect, you know, and, and, and didn't judge people in the day, but you grow up and you go, my goodness, the, the people that you connect with are the the ones that educate you, like you're doing with us right now, the ones that hopefully make you happy, the happiness army. You know, I always say, the mind, learning, the mind, the mind, army. the mind yeah. army, my apologies, the mind yeah. army. If you're not learning, it's about happiness. If you're, if you're not learning, you better yes. be laughing and, and, and surround yourselves around those people who genuinely, you know, captivate and engage you and, 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 or else it's sort of a waste of time. Cause if you're on the attack, if you're on the offensive. And if you're just gossipy about nothing that's moving forward, you're actually wasting the time you have here. So let's try to move forward together. Zappy. I love talking to you, man. This is great stuff. Yeah, nice. And, and and I would say, you know, we, we know scientifically that we're using something like 5% of our brain. And everybody always goes, oh, wouldn't it be incredible if we found like the limitless drug and we could use 80% of our brain? And I'm like, yes, we found it. It's called ketamine. Look at this, <laughs> you know, picture. Your brain is turned on 80%. And like you're saying, I'm like, you know, maybe if you came here to this planet and you never turned your brain on your right side of your brain, your creative you know, uh, evolutionary side of your brain, maybe you wasted the whole time. And that's pretty tragic. So if there are things that can turn more of your brain on, uh, by all means, I think people should do it. And if you're in end of life, let's say they give you a, a you know, a death sentence from some disease or something, they go, you have 90 days to live. Well, that's the perfect time for you to go inside your own mind and go deep and lose the fear of death and reconnect to the miracle and just maybe iron out your affairs in a better, more, you know, peaceful way. So it's like, we have this opportunity. It's so cool. I can't wait to be watching this video like five years from now and being like, oh my God, remember when that stuff was like illegal? And now it's like, you know, like they're giving, you know, truffles to kids at their lunchtime, you know, well, school. Know. That, that might fantastic. be a little much, but. <laughs> no, I really, I, do, I really, I don't even think, I mean, of course I, yeah. you have to say that, but I'm, I'm literally <laughs> saying that. I am saying that, you know, the best shamans that I've been in, caught in touch with or sat with in ceremony and these are uh they've been generationally shaman you know uh freddie yeah. puma who's in the reality of truth he took san pedro the first time when he was three years old you know i mean that's i don't think that's irresponsible i think that's part of their culture and it's probably something that's probably why he's such a cool transcended person who's helping so many people it's not a oh god don't do that it's more like well what would let's scientifically look at what would happen and sociologically look at what we've been doing and know that that's not right and how do we get more empathy and the only way i've seen somebody get instantly more empathy is they either have a near death experience or they have some breakthrough with a you know master healing plant or some catalyst like ketamine that can break them through their you know, localized reality and have them go, oh, wow, like, oh, my God, I'm part of the whole wholeness. So it's just, man, it's such a good time to be alive. And, uh, you know, here I am talking, talk about miracles. It's like, I'm talking to you in real time on video. It's like, oh, my, I've been waiting, you know, so many years for 
the video phone to come. And Remember Star man, Trek? And like people would laugh at that stuff, you know, like Star Trek. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, it is really very interesting. I mean, listen, we're a different generation than some wouldn't understand that, you know, when we grew up, this would literally be another impossible thought. And I think now yeah. we're seeing with things like psychedelics come to the forefront. Well, that was an impossible thought back in the day. We don't feel that way anymore at all, clearly. Zappy, yeah. uh, I love talking. I want to do this again. We need to stay in touch. Quickly remind everybody here on the High Time Psychedelic Podcast where people can follow you, where people can find you, where people can reach out to you. Yes. And, and more about the movie and, and, and uh, everything else going on. Cool. All right. So uh, definitely check out mindarmy.org. And like I said, we're fighting for the right to pursue happiness. Join us, sign our petition. We're asking the president to write this executive order. If it's Donald Trump, we intend to tell him, hey, you're gonna win the Nobel Prize for actually bringing down the suicide rate in veterans and do, making a dent in the opiate epidemic. That's how you actually win a Nobel Prize. And then if it's Joe Biden, I was hoping he was gonna say it last night in the debate, his son Hunter Biden had a drug and alcohol addiction issue and he broke it using uh, Iboga. So we intend to say to him, hey, if it's good enough for your son, it's good enough for everybody else. Get the pen. Well, let's write this executive order up. We're not going to wait around anymore. We don't want to talk to the local government, the city, the state, the DEA. No, we want to talk to the guy who can write the executive order and cause a lot of healing. And so mindarmy.org uh, is, a, is, is a perfect place. And, um, you know, you can go to Odom Reborn if you want to, uh, odomreborn.com, just to check out anything related to the movie. And um, yeah, that's it. I just, I want to encourage people to get a little bit more radical right now, because we are the majority and we have the best product in the world. So if we got to get really excited, really aggressive and say, we have the best product in the world. We have all these people around. Let's not make the mistake of the cannabis industry where they, you know, talk to everybody and they're still talking to city councils and you get through them. And then you got to talk to your, you know, like, I don't know. It, it's endless. It's garbage. It's like, let's in this crisis, get these things legalized. People will realize how important they are and we'll, we'll have them the rest of our our, our lives as human beings on this planet. And uh, we'll probably live a lot longer as a species by these things coming out sooner than later. So I really appreciate you sharing and, and being part of this conversation. It's awesome. I love it, dude. And listen, I'm in complete concurrence. I, I've been saying for, for many months now about social movements and how powerful they are these days to force change and make change way quicker than they ever could have in the past. And it is up to the people right now. If you're, if you're really a big believer and you want to explore more and you're not liking what is being told to you or prescribed to you, learn more, educate, and let's see if a social movement can happen. Zappy, where can people follow you personally? Is it at Zapp? What, what What's your handles? Um, you know, right now I'm, 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 I'm really focusing on this mind army. I would okay. direct people there, you know, it's like less than my, you know, social self. It's like, I'm a little, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to really direct my energy because, you know, we're in this cycle where it's a real crisis. And I think yeah. we just have to be diligent that we wake up every day and try to educate people because it's the only thing that's going to get out of side of what we call what we're calling the sad epidemics suicide addiction depression and now a pandemic so let, uh, let's just start you know keep screaming from the rooftops like you're doing uh bringing people high quality best practices and uh you know we'll look back probably next by this time next year we're going to have like a real shit eating grin on our face because it's going to be here. <laughs> well, listen, man, it's very kind of you not to uh, put it all on you and to put it on the organization and the movement. Really beautiful stuff. With that being said, I'll be selfish right now. I miss doing this. I used to do this on the daily for, you know, hours a day, whether it was Leo Trestor radio or Sirius XM radio. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm having so much fun here. We got to create the Zappy and Shappy show or something. Okay. We got to yes! <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, well, cheers. Here's my man and uh, Mike right. Zappi. Yeah, Zappi. And then we can't wait for the movie to come out with Lamar Odom as well. All right. Thank really, you. Peace, peace, my man. Cheers. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Cheers.